Hi, it's Ashley from Sweet Dreams Bake Shop and welcome back to my channel where I make a lot of cake and cookie decorating tutorials as well as give a lot of baking business tips. So I am trying to sneak in one last Valentine's Day tutorial here. I also have another video where I'm going to be sharing with you what Happy Cakes Bakery did this year for Valentine's Day, but this is officially the last tutorial of Valentine's Day before we move on to other things. And as per usual, please stand to the end of the video so you can see my pricing for these cookies. So I know it's a bit of a long tutorial today. Normally my cookie tutorials are a little bit shorter, but because we're on a time crunch, I'm just gonna combine all of them so you can look at all of this satisfying cookie decorating. I went on live for you guys the other day. If you missed that, you can go ahead and check this out in the right hand corner. That's really only if you want to see all of the pipe and flood consistency being laid down in real time where I give a little bit more explanation, but have no fear in the next week or so, I'm definitely going to be launching a video where I show you how I make my pipe and flood consistency and just be a little bit more clear with that because I know I haven't made a dedicated video just for that. I'm doing a little bit of wet on wet technique here, which basically means we're taking two pipe and flood consistencies and we're layering them on top of one another. Now, here are a few tips about using your pipe and flood consistency. You wanna make sure that when you're doing wet on wet, you don't flood right to the edge. I find if you flood right to the edge with this and then you add on more icing, it can overflow. So you wanna be a little bit more careful, especially if you haven't made a whole lot of cookies, going a little bit more inward so you're not piping all the way to the edge will save you the trouble of having to scrape off later. One of the biggest mistakes I made as a cookier in the beginning was just going with improper consistency and trying to make it work. It will never work and you're going to spend a lot of time having to wipe things up and having to compensate. So instead, if you notice that everything is flooding over the edge, definitely go back and re-whip your frosting. It really doesn't take that much to empty out a whole piping bag even after you filled it. And this is exactly why I use tipless piping bags. I find it's a lot less of a consequence to have to empty something out and I don't get clogs. I know in the beginning it was a lot of talk of which company has the best piping tips and honestly if you just use tipless piping bags you really don't have to worry about that. That being said I use piping tips all the time I just don't necessarily use them as much for cookies anymore. So just to reiterate, if you're noticing that everything is flooding over and not working out perfectly, go back, re-whip your icing, and all you probably need is a little bit more meringue powder and a little bit more icing sugar. My standard recipe is one cup of icing sugar to one tablespoon of meringue powder and as much water as needed. It always changes because humidity is different everywhere. All of the cookie cutters that I'm using today, with the exception of the plain hearts, are from Kaleida Cuts. This is not a sponsored video by Kaleida Cuts, however, I will say that they have amazing cookie cutters, super, super strong, give really clean cuts, and I find that their cookie cutters are very original. I don't see a whole lot of cookie cutters like this around, so definitely go and check them out. I will give you a little pre-warning though, if you're in Canada like I am, the shipping time does take quite a bit of time, so definitely plan ahead, especially if you want to do something for Easter that's coming up. I would order those cookie cutters now so that you have them in time. It's also kind of why this tutorial is a little bit late because I ordered the cookie cutters a while ago, but it took a lot longer than expected to arrive. So I'm just glad that I'm getting this in before Valentine's Day. So the general rule of thumb when you're cookie decorating is making sure that you're doing things in the correct order. Now, if you want that puffy kind of looking consistency rather than just lines that are dividing your details. You want to make sure that you dry in between every single time and that you're using only pipe and flood consistency as opposed to just pipe consistency. I will show you piping consistency later on in the video, but for now we're continuing on with just pipe and flood. So I'm doing all of these little pink details. By the way, I used a little bit of Americolor in pink today. I placed that whole tray of cookies in the oven at 175 degrees Fahrenheit just to dehydrate that icing a little bit. You'll notice that it's gone opaque. That's how you can tell the surface layer is dry. It may not be dry through and through, but this is dry enough so that you can go ahead and add on more details. I cannot tell you the amount of time that I used to waste waiting for layers to dry and going away and then coming back the next day to make sure that everything was dry. That was so silly. Now I get my cookies done way, way faster and I can do whole sets like this within a few hours. So I'm going in, adding those details in. Again, you'll notice that I'm skipping in between because I need that section to pop out. If I try to just pipe directly next to it, it's all gonna meld into one another and then you're never going to get that definition. 
By the way, when using the dehydrating technique of putting it in that oven at 175 degrees Fahrenheit, in case you missed that, you want to make sure that you take off any cookies that don't have wet icing on them. You don't want to just keep rebaking those layers. If you do that, eventually the icing will explode because it'll get too warm and then it always tends to crack or explode on me. By the way, I should have mentioned this earlier, but this type of consistency is also the type that you don't have to shake or knock or pop with anything. You can just leave it and it will all melt into the perfect consistency for you. And again, in that future video, I'm going to show you how to make that consistency so you don't have to worry with all those other things like cookie picks. Although sometimes I do like a good cookie scribe now and again. I love that the robot cookies are three part cookies. I think I ordered the regular size or standard size cookie. In future, I think I will order the larger version. In my head, for some reason, I thought that these would be a little bit bigger. They're really, really cute as they are, but I think just having that nice big version is a really, really nice seller to have. By the way, I did warm up my gray a little bit. I wanted it to give that really robot-esque look. So I added a little bit of yellow to the black that I added in. And by the way, when you're making gray icing, make sure that you're just adding like a dot of black. Keep in mind that icing colors do tend to get a little bit more saturated over time. So if you want something that's even more pale gray than this, definitely just a few little drops. Now we're moving along to our toaster here. This cookie cutter I fell in love with. Again, I've never seen anything like it. I love it. It's supposed to be a little pop tart coming out of a toaster. Now I know this was for their Valentine's Day collection because there's a little saying that's gonna go on the front of these toasters. However, I definitely think that I could use this particular cookie cutter all year round. Of course though, we want to give a good dose of Valentine's, so I am adding on those heart sprinkles there. Moving along to our little love bug, we're going to do a little bit of a different technique here. I don't do this very often on my channel. You're going to take a little bit of that pipe and flood consistency, and I'm going to take a brush. Now I know that seems a little bit translucent. You want it translucent because this is supposed to be the window portion. Now because this is me, of course, I'm going to add on some sparkles and these are fully edible sparkles. I really love the chunky glitter. You can totally skip this part. I just wanted to add a little bit of glitter because I just don't feel satisfied until I've added a little bit of glitter to my cookie sets. And then I don't have to wait for that to dry or anything. It's such a small amount of icing so you can just pipe right over top. Really important that you nail where you're putting those windows. If you find you're having difficulty placing on details in general on your cookies, there's one of two ways to solve that. You can always take a paper copy and then you can trace with an edible pen on your cookie so you know where you're supposed to put your lines or you can also project. Now, I know a lot of people like to project, and honestly, you're gonna come out with the most perfect looking cookies. I myself am actually just too lazy to pull that thing out. Plus, I feel like my cords, some of them don't work, and so it never works right away on the first try, so I always have to fiddle around with it. So you won't see me using my projector often. Sometimes I will pull it out for a tutorial here or there, especially if I'm doing something very, very detailed, but for the most part, I try to wing it. And later on in the video, I show you all of my free handwriting. I know some of you were very interested in how I make these eyes. I'm using the same pipe and flood consistency right away using that wet on wet technique and then placing these on. Some people like to make eyes in bulk as transfers and then they can put them onto anything they want. You could totally do that if you have leftover frosting. However, I will say that if not all of your characters are the exact same size, sometimes you might want different sized eyeballs. Now what I'm doing is I'm filling everything in after I dehydrated that. Now you could do these wheels in one of two ways. If you don't want the actual center portion popping out, you could do that first, or you could paint it on like we did with the windows, and then you could put your detailing on the outside. I decided to go with it this way. Now moving along to those gumball machines, I'm gonna add on a bunch of different things here. First, I'm gonna lay down some hearts, again, using that pipe and flood consistency. I'm also going to put a ton of sprinkles on here using all of my mix. In fact, today, guys, I'm trying to use up all of my sprinkles, so I'm going to be making a ton of cupcakes just so I can use them all up. I've mentioned this before that sprinkles do not last forever. After about six months, I especially noticed this with the Quins, they tend to start getting that Play-Doh smell. Now, I've eaten them when they have that Play-Doh smell and it really isn't disgusting or anything like that, but I do find that the sprinkles just aren't as crisp. A little bit of that moisture has gotten in there, so they're just not as fresh. I generally like to make sure that I use up my sprinkles each season. 
I always wanted to drive a bug when I was a kid. I really, really did. We used to call them punch buggies. Let me know down in the comments below if you used to call them that as well. Once again, make sure that your icing is fully dry before adding on anything like this. I find this section here really makes the car come together and makes it look a little bit more 3D. And we're not going to stop there. We're definitely going to add some airbrushing on later on in the video. You'll notice my toasters are all swirly looking there. I had to add in more frosting without actually changing the bag, but that's fine because we're going to save it all with our airbrush. Adding in a few dots here for detailing. Now I know a lot of people actually do like to use the transfer method for things like this. I find it's only necessary if you're going on uneven surfaces, but because this part of the tire is very flat, it's very easy to place that on. And then we can put that heart sprinkle directly on as well. I am having to use some tweezers because it is a little bit tricky to place something so small in the center of something. I have several different styles of eyes that I like to do, but once I've gone with one for one set, I generally like to keep the same set of eyes for everything that I'm using on that set. So you'll notice our robots have matching eyes with our bees, but I did only do one little glint instead of the two glints that I did for the bees. Now Kaleida Cuts does have fonts that you can directly copy, but I decided to go with my own fonts using the same sayings that they put on their sample cookies. I'm going with just my regular printing here. Now when you're doing just regular printing, it really is just a series of lines, dots, and curved lines. And if you're just starting out with piping writing, I definitely suggest that first of all, you use a very thickened icing, piping consistency, and that you use it on dry cookies so that you can scrape off if there are any mistakes. My script for this portion is fairly similar to my printing in that it really is just curved lines and I'm really just using my natural writing that I would normally have. Going in and adding in some eyebrows, I was going to do this with an edible pen, but uh, if you guys know, I've lost my edible pen somewhere and I cannot find them. Going back to our writing, I'm doing a little bit more of a kind of messy look when I do these. I really love it when it looks nice and scripty, but you can still see what it says, and that says I love you. Writing is one of those things that the more that you look at pictures and you just try to emulate what you're seeing, eventually you're going to be able to train yourself to do it exactly like that every single time. I love it when I get to this part of the cookieing because of course this means I get to add in all of my details. Now I will say because some time has passed, I think it was about 24 hours before I actually got to these details, I did have to re-whip all of my icing. One of the biggest mistakes I made at the beginning was not re-whipping and then my icing consistency would be a lot looser. So then all of my details would start going into one another. So now what I did is I re-whipped everything and I also added in a little bit more icing sugar and a little bit more meringue powder so we're getting pipe consistency this time so it's not the pipe and flood this is piping consistency if I used pipe and flood it would probably all melt into one another and it would not look like the word love at all once again I'm going to show you how to actually write this script I'm keeping even pressure the whole time making sure that being straight is actually not my biggest worry with this if you ever find yourself not writing straight you can always turn it into this really scripty look and just bring up your letters so that it looks straight it gives the illusion that it's straight the really popular script has an illusion that it's straight now this here with the printing does have to be straight or else yeah you will run into problems with this that being said, this particular cutter actually relies on you using the exact same script that Kaleida Cuts sets out for it, so I did have to copy the picture for this. If that makes you a little bit nervous, I highly recommend that you project something like this. Now for this cookie, I actually was using pipe and flood consistency, but later on, what I have to end up doing is I have to end up going in with piping consistency just to make sure that everything looks a little bit more perfect. Now my original intent was, well, this is a pretty large cookie, so I'll probably be able to get away with just using pipe and flood consistency. That was not so, so I did have to go back in and use that detailing frosting. This is exactly what I'm talking about when I talk about making sure that you have the right consistency before you begin because you're just going to create more work for yourself. 
And I had this weird little dot on there that I created during when I went live. I don't know how it got on there, but I did have to make sure that I covered it up. So anytime you have a mistake, just use some detailings and you will be just fine. I wanted to give you guys this shot because I feel like this type of shot is missing from most of my cooking videos. Notice how I'm actually pulling up those lines quite a bit and then dropping them down. I know I've talked about this before, but I really wanted you to see just how far I'm pulling up that bag. Doing that gives you ultimate control, especially when you're making straight lines. It is incredibly difficult to keep that piping bag really close and draw a straight line. But when you pull up this way, you're able to get everything nice and straight the very first time. And yeah, this is what I was talking about, about having to go in with that detailing icing to make sure that everything looked nice and neat. Time for some airbrushing, time to get rid of that quality where it's all kind of swirled like that. And don't worry if you're not able to cover with airbrush the first time. All that means is that you just have to wait a little bit until it's fully dry. If you try to keep airbrushing until it's fully, fully opaque and covered, what's going to end up happening is you're going to get a bunch of little droplets all over your cookie because the airbrush is just going to sit on top of itself. So definitely make sure that you dry in between and then you apply your airbrush again. Now I'm adding on a little bit of pink, just giving a little bit of detailing to the actual Pop-Tart and you'll notice that I gave a little bit of an ombre effect to the center of those love cookies. And I'm going in with some more airbrush on these gumball machines, just adding a little bit more definition. I am an airbrush person. I love using the airbrush to give it that kind of realistic cartoon quality. I don't know what to call it really because it's not super realistic, but just that hint of realism. But a lot of people like to leave them nice and flat and I think they look cute like that as well. Now the airbrush, if applied lightly, will dry fairly quickly and they'll be ready to do more details on top of in just a few minutes. I know a lot of people struggle with spacing with their writing. Honestly, I know that some people like to measure things out or they like to put little markers in place. I always find it just works better when I eyeball it. This just comes with a lot, a lot of practice. But also this style of script allows you to be a little bit less perfect with it because you notice you can pull some of the letters downward or upward if needed and it generally looks straight still. And of course, you can always just do straight printing at first. I think for the first three years, I only did straight printing on my cookies because that's what I was comfortable with. Now I'm taking a little bit of luster dust. Honestly, this wasn't my favorite pick, but it seemed to work out. It was a mix of gold as well as some rose gold. I think I would have preferred just straight gold, but I only have the rose gold left, so I ended up going with that. In the end, it still looks cute. Mixed it in with a little bit of vodka and then placed it on the cookie. It dries pretty much instantaneously once it is applied. I will say that in the beginning of using luster dust and vodka, I never seem to put enough of the luster dust in. And then I put too much vodka in and then it kind of goes on clear. So you want to make sure that you get that nice and thick before you put it on. But not too thick so that it won't paint. Hands down, these are my favorite Valentine's Day cookies that I've ever made, and I'm so glad that I got to share it with you guys. Now let's get into the pricing of these cookies. These are a little bit more complicated because there's so many different ones, but in general, for a custom order, it would be four to seven dollars and fifty cents Canadian each. There would be a dollar minimum implemented, so that means that they're probably going to get a lot of these cookies, and if not, they're still going to have to pay that dollar minimum. And for the stock order, since they don't have to purchase a minimum order or dollar minimum, then it would just be a little bit more expensive because they could buy these as singles. There is no customization whatsoever, and I know we often put out photos for pre-orders, but always make a little asterisk that says the pre-order might differ slightly in detail. Now let's get into the subscriber submission of the video. This one comes from at the underscore sugar underscore palace underscore. So definitely go and drop them a like, drop them a comment and check them out on Instagram. And if you guys want to be the next featured subscriber on my channel, then be sure to follow me at SD Bake Shop on Instagram, where you can either tag me in a photo or send me a photo of your latest creation. Any and all dessert levels are welcome. Thanks so much for watching, guys. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe so you can be part of the Sweetie Fam. Right now, I'm uploading weekly, so make sure you hit that notification bell so you know when I upload. Also, be sure to comment, request, or ask a question. I love hearing from you guys. Bye!